Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Muhammad Ali. I go by Ali for those of you who don't know me. Uh, my first time actually uh, presenting, so let's see how, uh, uh, how it goes. A uh, couple of different, a couple of facts I want to kind of mention about me. Uh, first one, I cannot float like a butterfly, nor I can sting like a bee. However, I can fix your Wi-Fi. <clears throat> so. <laughs> Uh, so my topic is actually data rate versus cell sizes. Um, you know, data rate, we're all pretty familiar with the terms, what they are, I'm not gonna, no reason to get deep into it. Um, DSS data rates, HR DSS data rates, OFDM data rates, and then there's minimum basic data rates. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to focus on OFDM because that is what my testing is based on. <clears throat> So um, I have uh, just grabbed some uh, information from 802.11.2016 standard, um, and it's listed over here. Um, but again, like I said, the transmit rate of OFDM is my primary uh, focus over here, which is around 6 meg. Uh, digging a little bit more into it, uh, if you look at the phi header of OFDM uh, <clears throat> PPDU, uh, it shows, uh, according to the 802.11.2016 standard, it's supposed to actually utilize uh, VPSK half. And what is VPSK half transmit rate? It's actually 6 meg. And how is it 6 meg? Um, here's a little formula <clears throat> uh, that kind of goes over that. Uh, for, for my, for my uh, testing, and I, I encourage everyone to please feel free to actually use your own testing. Uh, what I did, I created two different SSIDs. Uh, one was low rate, <clears throat> one was high rate. Low rate was using 6 meg MBR, high rate was using 36 meg MBR. Um, and I just used Ekahau and Sidekick to do a little walk in my house. Uh, it's not a big house, so I had to actually go outside my house to do some of the walking. Um, and uh, you, I used the threshold of neg 85. And you can see, I mean, the orange areas and some, those are like around kind of hitting the neg 85 threshold. Now what happens when I actually just use uh, 36 meg MBR? Um, same exact, uh, you know, walking path, uh, and, and now with a 36 meg MBR, with a high rate SSID, a uh, bunch of areas actually are showing nothing. I mean, it's, I use, it's the neg 85 signal uh, is, is kind of, you know, getting cut off. <clears throat> so, I mean, you, when you look at it right away, it kind of tells you that, hey, uh, so cutting down data rates actually did cut down my cell size? Well, did it? Actually, no, it didn't. Because if I take my client and stand right there where there is no signal, and I try to look at a high-rate SSID, obviously I'm not going to see it because it cannot demodulate that far away from the access point, uh, those beacon frames. So it's not going to see the high rate SSID. But the RF energy is still there. Um, and why is it there? Because OFDM uh, <clears throat> phi, uh, phi headers actually are getting transmitted at 6 meg. And that actually is showing the lower rate SSID right there. <clears throat> um, I used a couple of other uh, tests actually just to validate what I'm seeing in Akahau is actually, you know, it's, it's correct. I mean, so I use the airport utility, and same exact thing, low rate, high rate SSID. Um, as you can see, the time frame, uh, 122, that's when I kind of started, around neg 83 dBm. I'm able to see both SSIDs. Uh, as I start walking away from it, uh, once I hit uh, around neg 87, neg 88 dBm, all of a sudden, high rate SSID disappeared. However, I was able to see the low rate SSID that is using the MBR of 6 meg. I was still able to see it um, all the way to like meg 96 dBm. Uh, here's uh, an, an another quick screenshot. Uh, I started with around neg 86 dBm uh, using Wi Fi Explorer. Thanks, Adrian. Um, and uh, it, it, it's showing both SSIDs. As soon as I start hitting neg 87, neg 88, and in this case, I was up to neg 93, the low rate SSID is still there that is using 6 meg uh, MBR, but the high rate SSID disappeared. But it doesn't mean that the RF energy is not there, it's still there. <clears throat> uh, so does the data rate, data rate impact the cell size? No, it doesn't, but it does impact the association cell size. And what I mean by that is, imagine you have two access points, each one of them are on channel 36, and they're not overlapping with each other because there's, you know, di there's distance between them. Uh, what happens if, if they're both using a 6 meg MBR? <clears throat> you have client one that, for example, is connected uh, right at the edge of BSS1. Uh, now, that client will create its own little 
uh, signal that will be on channel 36. Also, it will flow into BSS2 because it is so close to it. Uh, what's going to happen when client 1 is actually transmitting? Client 2 cannot transmit at that time because it will have to wait for client 1. Again, because client 1 signal is actually flowing into BSS2. Well, what happens if I change that data rate now? If I change that data rate, now as you can see that that association cell size actually is much smaller. So now client one actually will be connected in something like this and its signal is no longer flowing into BSS2. What that means if while client one, in, is, one is transmitting, client two will be able to transmit at the same time. Uh, Lastly, just want to kind of talk about some best practices, especially, again, I want to focus on the data rates because that's the main topic. Uh, when we are you know, we're looking to actually cut down data rates, just have to be careful. I mean, I've been in environments where sometimes you, uh, pe people will cut down data rates uh, and there's not enough access points, and that can end up actually causing uh, what do you call it, um, uh, coverage gaps in different areas then. So when you're cutting down data rates, make sure you have enough access points. You are able to provide coverage in every single area. Uh, capacity is another thing you need to worry about. If you uh, have enough access points and you need to actually worry about the capacity, you do want to cut down data rates. Uh, best thing to do it is actually uh, test it out, everything that, that you're doing. Uh, uh, you know, calibrate your client devices. Uh, creating offsets is very crucial. Um, access point locations. Carl actually did a very good presentation yesterday, and he showed he kind of you know hit that point exactly that it's very important where you're installing access point. Uh, you, you need to pay attention to that. Using the right antennas again, very crucial. I mean, 30 feet high up, you don't want to put omnidirectional antennas. You want to try to use some kind of directional antenna uh, unless you are able to drop those access points. You're trying to create a P2P connection. Beam width. You don't want to have a 120 degree beam width. You might want to use actually a, a 20 degree beam width. I mean, sorry, 20, 30 degree beam width, a narrow beam width. Um, configuring minimum and max values. Um, I try to always plan and design for the minimum power value. I never you like to use the defaults, vendor defaults. Um, but always best thing practices or best thing to do it is you go on site, you actually try out different values and see what works and what doesn't work in that environment. And that's all. Thank you.